Hi everyone, I'm Miss Mori. I am the seventh grade social studies teacher. Because we couldn't do an in-person open house this year, the teachers wanted to go ahead and make some videos to kind of introduce themselves and give you a brief overview of what their class is going to look like. So you're gonna notice over here, I have an agenda for what we're gonna look at in this video. I'm gonna give you a very brief introduction into me. Um, then we're gonna talk about the classroom expectations and the syllabus grading procedures. Now, this is just gonna be a very brief, short video, kind of just going over things, not really in too much detail. So if you have any specific questions, concerns, you just wanna introduce yourself, I have included my email. Uh, that's gonna be the easiest way to contact me right now. So uh, cmori at bendelschools.org is my email. I'll probably respond within 24 hours. Uh, if not 24, then within 48 hours, depending on if it's you know during the week or the weekend. Um, so a little background into me. This will be my second year teaching at Bendel Middle School. I am in room 11, which is directly across the hall from Miss Hamlin's room. I grew up in Davison, went off to Grand Valley State University for my undergraduate degree. Uh, once I graduated there, I moved back to Davison and got my master's in literacy education, knowing that I kind of wanted to find a school district in the area that I grew up with and teach, teach in that district for the rest of my teaching career. Um, outside of teaching, I enjoy PC gaming and I enjoy Twitch. So our theme for the classroom this year is going to be PC gaming and Twitch. Uh, because we're doing a lot of virtual components this year, it only seemed appropriate. And I kind of want to take the interest that the students have in gaming uh, and use that within the classroom so that they know the format. They don't have to learn a new format. They just have to learn the information that I'm trying to get across about you know, ancient Egypt or whatever culture we're, we're talking about at that time. Uh, so students will kind of recognize even this video format kind of looks like a Twitch stream. Uh, so I kind of hope that's a little bit easier transition for them. Uh, and then I'm also going to try and include different gaming aspects in the different lessons. So we may play a short little video game in class that has to do with the educational topic that we're looking at. So uh, hopefully the kids get excited about that. I know I'm excited about uh, the different opportunities we have with that this year. Um, if you have any specific questions, again, please, please, please contact me. Uh, the biggest thing is to keep that open line of communication between families and the school. Um, so I am here to help you with anything that you need. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about our expectations. Uh, again, this is just going to be a brief overview. I'm not really going to explain them too much. I'm just going to go over them. And then I do have copies of the expectations and the syllabus. I'm going to have copies in the description of this video so that you can kind of go over that at your own pace and read it more in depth. So again, you'll see my email there in case you want to contact me. Classroom expectations. Uh, now the school is going to release some specific uh, virtual classroom expectations and obviously there's still the common sense classroom expectations um, but just a few things to kind of go over you need to come to class prepared both with materials and uh, with the right mindset to learn uh, respect the learning of others respect the space you need to be safe ask questions Stay on task, be on time, uh, cell phones should not be seen or heard. Ask permission to get out of your seat, especially with what's going on uh, in the world today. We need to make sure that we are properly following the rules laid out by the state. Um, participate, masks must be worn at all times. Uh, now obviously that is an in-class expectation. If you are at home and you're doing the virtual component, uh, if you're in your own house, I'm obviously not expecting you to be wearing the mask. Uh, same goes for social distance. That is an in-school rule, um, obviously, in your own home. 
that is up to you to socially distance or not socially distance with the people living in your household. Uh, and then follow the pre procedures. So obviously there's gonna be more, we're gonna go more in depth with these on the first day of the class, but this is just a very brief overview. A lot of it is gonna be common sense uh, and probably the same expectations that you've had in all of your classes throughout your education. Uh, looking at the syllabus, again, this is going to be a brief overview. I'm not going to really go too far in depth with it. Um, so seventh grade social studies, we have our course description. We're looking at ancient world history. Um, so we're going to be looking at different cultures. We're going to be looking at different religions. Now, we're obviously not going to be pushing uh, one religion over another. It is simply just the, the facts of this religion was founded here and it spread to these locations on this date and it founded some important civilizations that uh, kind of impacted our life today. Um, so the course outline kind of gives you a better idea of what we're looking at. For the first semester, we're going to be looking at studying history. So how do we study history? Uh, then we're going to look at the Fertile Crescent, we're going to be looking at Ancient Egypt, Ancient American Civilizations, uh, Polytheism to Monotheism, so going from religions that have more than one God to religions that have one God. Poly meaning more than one, mono meaning one. Uh, then we're going to end with the Mediterranean. Now for semester two, we're going to be looking at Early Rome and the Roman Empire. Indian civilizations, classical China, and then post-classical China. Um, if you have any questions about what specifically we're going to be looking at, please feel free to contact me and I can kind of give you a layout of what the lessons will look like uh, and we can kind of go over that with our families. Uh, grading. So most, I try not to have too much homework. Um, the only way we would have homework is if we don't get through everything in class. But homework and classwork assignments are usually graded on a 10 point scale. Um, so if a student gets a 10, it means it's completely and accurately done. Uh, if the student gets a six through a nine, uh, it means it's mostly complete, mostly accurate. Uh, a one to a five means the assignment is attempted but not complete and or accurate. Um, and then an NHI means the assignment was not turned in. Now, if a student gets uh, anything from an NHI to a nine, they have the opportunity to uh, improve that grade. So let's say you turn in the assignment, I return it back to you and say, hey, you got a five out of 10 uh, because you missed a section or these you know, five questions were wrong. If you fix it, and you correct it and then turn it back in, then you can improve that grade. Um, now, if you don't turn the assignment in at all, and then you realize, you know, end of the marking period, oh, I missed that assignment, uh, and you want to turn it in then, uh, you can get a maximum of eight out of 10, which is still a passing grade. Uh, when it comes to the entire class, grade breakdown is 10% of your grade will come from assignments, 20% will come from projects, 20% will come from quizzes, and then 40% will come from unit tests. So you'll probably look at like one or two of those uh, marking period, depending on how many units we work on. Now, homework policy. So late work, meaning you didn't turn it in on the assigned date, uh, can be submitted for a maximum of eight points. All projects will have a specific due date. Late projects will be penalized a mandatory 5%. Uh, most homework and all projects will be accepted, unless otherwise noted, until the end of the current quarter. So by the end of the marking period. If I assign something in September, don't try and turn that in, you know, in May, because that's a completely different semester. Uh, you kind of want to keep up on that. So at the end of each marking period, uh, you'll want to look and make sure you turn everything in. Um, or if you wanted to correct it. If we get to the end of the marking period and you have an 89% and you want a 90, 
I can show you what you need to work on to improve that grade. You can return it in and you can boost that up to an A. Materials to bring to class every day. Um, obviously a face, a face mask, your computer, a notebook or paper, however you want to have. You need something to write on and it needs to be full sheets. It can't be like half sheets or a little like notepad. You're going to want a full notebook or a full sheet of paper, um, a folder or something to keep your work in so you don't lose it, whether that's a binder, a folder, uh, whatever you want to keep your work so you can keep it neat and not misplace it. Uh, and then a writing utensil. I don't care if it's a pen or a pencil as long as you can write with it. Uh, if you are absent, it is your responsibility to figure out what you missed, whether that be asking another student, going to the uh, spot in the classroom on the program that we're using or in the physical classroom, or asking me at an appropriate time. Uh, it is your responsibility. I'm not going to track you down to try and tell you what you missed. Um, you have two days after you returned to complete the assignment because obviously I understand if you were absent from my class, you were probably absent from all of your other classes, so you're gonna have quite a bit of work to make up. So if you were absent, uh, let's say on Monday, and you return on Tuesday, I'll give you your work on Tuesday, and then you have two class days to, to work on that before it is due. Uh, and then finally, parents, it is essential that we work together as a team for the educational success of your student. My door is always open. Please never hesitate to email or call me with questions. Uh, I will make phone calls home to update students, uh, to update parents on student progress. The easiest and quickest way to get a hold of me is email. Uh, I don't often have time to sit down and make phone calls because there's usually students in my class. Uh, but in email, I can kind of respond to a little bit uh, more, more quickly. So email's best. If you want to uh, email me, introduce yourself. Um, I can do weekly updates like, hey, here's what we're going to be working on next week. Hey, just so you know, your student uh, was working on this topic this week, and they turned everything in. Um, just to kind of keep that communication going and keep you involved. Um, but that is about it. So again, um, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me. Copies of the expectations in the syllabus are below in the description so that you can kind of go over that uh, at your own time and more in depth. And students and I will be going over that uh, a lot more detailed in the first couple days of school. Um, I hope you guys have a great rest of your summer and I am excited for what the school year will bring. Bye!